that was, uh, you know, a little rain gets on you, and then you're cold, and you come into the building, so I feel you on being cold. How you guys doing? Except for the people who's cold. You put the blanket away, you good? Blanket? Yeah. Ms. Kirsten, you gonna be warm? You can keep your hats on if you're feeling a little cold, because I get it. I told you guys uh, I had lost my hat, and I put a reward out, and I got my hat back, so I'm happy about that, but I'm not gonna teach with the hat on. Um, so I had to take it off, so I'm in touch with you being a little cold. Uh, when it gets colder, you have your mask on, your glasses get clogged up. So I'm trying to see my board so I can follow what's going on, but it's kind of far away from me. So we're going to do the check-in. We're going to do our attendance, see how everybody's doing. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best day of your life, uh, 1 being things aren't going so well today. Let's check in and see how everyone's feeling, okay? Okay, uh, Ms. Viviana? No. Ms. Dayton? No. Mr. Ms. Salima? No. Ms. Melissa? No. Mr. David? No. Five. What's going on, Mr. David? You're going steady down every day this week. You okay? Huh? Okay, I see you turned in. Um, some most of your work is in, so that's good. Miss Monica. Mr. Daniel. Miss Amber. Mr. Jose. Miss Cecil. Miss Janet. Miss Maria Mendez. Miss Maria Montes. Mr. Joel. Ms. Adam Maris? Present. Mr. Alonzo? Present. Mr. Johnny? Not here. Not here today. Ms. Mar? Eight. Eight. Ms. Crystal? Present. Did you guys play yesterday? Yeah. Did you win? No. Didn't I tell you not to come back to class if you didn't win? So you wanted me to dip? <laughs> no, we never want you to dip. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Damien? Uh, 10. Okay, consistent 10. Mr. Eric? 10. Did you guys play yesterday? No. Uh, they, they didn't play? No, they didn't have play. Okay. They played soccer. And how'd they do? They win, they win. Oh, okay, good job, good job. Mr. Leonardo? An eight. Eight? An eight? You're an eight today? Yeah. How fantastic is that? What's going on? I'm getting my COVID vaccinated. Okay, congratulations on that. You're gonna help keep us safe. Okay, so we have your Chromebooks out so you can see your grades, you give us our announcements. You can see what you did uh, on the elephant man. That went fairly well. I graded all of that, so you have that information. Um, I didn't make comments. I didn't. I didn't make corrections before you submitted that. So I graded you on what you submitted. Most of you did well. You took my suggestions. You made the corrections, and so I'm really impressed with how how far we've come in terms of being able to write a paragraph. They, they, they look better, and I like where we are. I do want to make one little note about that before we begin today's lesson. Um, the voice was not going to jail, okay? Uh, the voice was more like a consciousness of observing the events, okay? Everybody understand what I'm talking about? Okay. Uh, Mr. Jose. What's our learning objective for today? Uh, this will be to identify and display empathy using active listening skills. Say a little louder so everybody can hear you. 
students will be able to identify and display empathy using active listening skills. Okay, so that's one of our objectives for today. Um, more specifically, I want to drill down on the difference between empathy and sympathy. Okay? Um, Ms. Moore, when we talk about empathy, what are we talking about? Okay, so we're trying to look at things from another person's point of view. And then, uh, Ms. Janet, when we talk about sympathy, what are we talking about? Build on that, what do you mean by that? I don't want to put you on the, on the spot. Use your elbow partner who you are in constant contact with. Can you help them, Miss Amber? What does she mean by that? When we talk about sympathy, what's the difference between sympathy and empathy? What, 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 what's going on? With empathy, you are able to take the, uh, help the person out of the situation and get them think back on it. So that's the negative. And with sympathy, you are just feeling bad for the person, so you're not really feeling that too. Okay, we're gonna show her some love. We'll show her love. Okay, uh, Ms. Leo, what do you have? We're talking about the difference between empathy and sympathy. What do you have? Okay, very good. So how do we know which one we want to use? How do we know when is empathy coming and when is sympathy coming? Depending on the situation. It depends on the situation, sure. But for you, how do you determine which one you're going to use? You're going to use empathy, you're going to use sympathy, how, how do we know? We know that empathy is probably better, but how do you decide? Who can help them with that? How do we decide if we're gonna use empathy, or we're gonna be empathetic toward a person, or we're gonna be sympathetic toward a person? Ms. Monica, you got any thoughts on that? Ms. Amber. You think it's based off of what the other person likes? Like, for example, if they don't like your city and they want help, then obviously I would teach them empathy. But if it's something where they don't want attention, then I just give them my sympathy. So you're talking about being in tune to what the other person is feeling. Okay? I want to offer you like a little guide toward how we differentiate between empathy and sympathy. It's kind of like when you have sympathy for someone, you're understanding their plight from your perspective. Okay, you understand what I mean by that? You're looking at it from your point of view. And some people even take it on. I say, I use this one a lot because it's just easy to understand. I say, my dog died, and I'm upset about my dog dying, but you don't let me have that moment because you want to tell me about the time your dog died. And so I'm not able to emote the way I might because you've taken the moment. Empathy puts ourselves in the other person's shoes so that we can understand the why of how they're feeling. So, Miss Mark, 
Can you recall any reading that we've done where we've had to put ourselves in the shoes of someone else? Anything that jumps out at you during the day? I can't hear you. To kill a mockingbird. Okay, so when we read that, where was the empathy? So he asked her what? When he asked not to give him thanks because he didn't want to feel embarrassed. So the empathy was shown and recognizing putting herself into Mr. Uh, Bob's shoes of how he was feeling. Is everyone clear on that? We're pretty clear on that? Okay, so when we talk about empathy and sympathy, we deal with people's emotions. So we have to be in touch with our emotions. Unfortunately, Mrs. Michelle's not here. I want to build on that, something that we had discussed that she was feeling um, particularly bad about. But empathy involves a couple of points I want to point out because we had some examples. I asked you to tell me about a time that um, you show empathy toward a person. And a lot of you told me that you show empathy but you didn't give me the process of how we show empathy, all right? Mr. Alonzo, what's the first thing we do when we show, if you, if you want to show empathy and you have a situation, what would be the first thing you do? Understand what the person's feeling? I'm sorry? Understand what the person's feeling? Yeah, you want to understand the person's feeling, and that's the overall objective of what we're trying to get to, but let's drill down on what we will specifically do. Miss Adam Maris. We would listen to the person's situation. Hey, okay, give it to us. That's the first thing, okay? People want to feel like you're listening to them. And what were one of the things you would do to make a person feel like you're listening to them? Come on, Miss Christmas, step up. Um, I contact. I'm sorry? Eye contact. Look the person in the eye so that they know that you're hearing them. Mr. Ms. Adam Harris. Body language. Your body language. Okay? And we talk about body language and eye contact as students. So the body language I give you, the eye contact you give me. The active listening. What else do we do? Anybody? Ms. Viviana? We ask them questions. Because we're trying to get to the why they're feeling that way. And we ask questions so we can recognize, Mrs. Damien, what? What are we trying to find out? Uh, I was going to say another thing. Uh, we're trying to find out how they, uh, what they what's, the, what's the best thing we can do to help them? Try to start understanding. What's the best thing to help them, and how can we find out what's the best way to help them? What do we have to drill down on? Mr. Joe, what do we have to drill down on to figure out the best way to help a person? We put their self, we put ourselves in their shoes. How do we do that, Mr. Alonzo? understand why they're feeling that way. We can understand why they're feeling that way once we identify what? What's the name? The issue of the situation. I'm looking for a special word. You're there, you're there, but I'm looking for a special word. We have to identify the what? Miss Amber. Somebody give me a guess. The problem, the gist, or in this case, I'm looking for the word 
how they're feeling, the emotion. Are they dealing with anger? Are they dealing with jealousy? Uh, are they dealing with disappointment? What are they dealing with? All of you had good answers, but I was looking for the emotion because once we drill down on the emotion, then we can actually put ourselves in their shoes and understand what it is they're feeling. Now those are things that I pointed out to you previously, but I also want to add a couple other things. We want to accept their interpretation of what happened. One of the most frustrating things, you may have, your parents may do this to you, it may have happened to you, and you say, I, I, I lost my finger. And the person says to you, well, at least you didn't lose your whole hand, okay? Minimizing what it is they're going through. You don't want to minimize what a person is going through because everybody has the right to feel the way they feel. So we want to accept their interpretation of how they're feeling. And we might even want to restate the problem as they see it so that we can fully understand what it is they're experiencing and allow them to have that experience. Lastly, We ask, is it okay to move on from where they are? We don't move them on because we have grown tired of listening. We ask them, is it okay to move to the next step? Do I have any questions about that? So does anybody want to share an experience with me when they felt a certain type of way? And they had a certain emotion. All these people in here, no one wants to share. You guys feeling shy today? Nobody wants to share? There was a time where you either wanted empathy from somebody, or you shared empathy with someone. Just smile at Talk to me. You felt empathy when? When who felt empathy? Your cousin fell down the stairs. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Your cousin fell down the stairs. Do you think you have to fall down the stairs to show empathy? Well, you're putting yourself in their shoes. Why wouldn't you have to fall down the stairs too? Because you can imagine how they might feel. And so what did you do? I can't hear you. Okay, so you examined the situation, you saw uh, the physical injury, and then what did you do? Did you listen? Okay. Very good. Now I'm wondering, do you feel like in order to show empathy, you have to do something for the person? No? Why not? You feel like you do have to do something. How many agree with her? You have to do something to feel empathy for a person. How many, be, how many of you believe that? Show a hand. Okay, so nobody believes that. Okay, let me, let, me, let me restate. Everyone has to participate. Okay? How many of you feel that you actually have to do something to show empathy toward a person? You have to actually do something. One, two, 
three, four, five. Okay, six. Okay, there we go. Okay. And how many feel like you can show them to do without doing anything? Okay, so you're evenly split. And that's about the right number to be evenly split because we need to be critical thinkers and we have to analyze what actually is going on, right? A beggar comes to a million dollar home and asks the homeowner for money for food. And the homeowner says, get away from my house, get away from my gate. And then he goes back into his house and writes a $10,000 check, sends it to the food shelf. How do we evaluate that? Has he shown empathy to the man that was at his gate? But he didn't really give it to the man. So is that more sympathy that he had? Uh, he had sympathy for the predicament. Which one? Was that sympathy, or did he show empathy? When we talked about takeaway from different ratings that we have, how do we evaluate and distinguish between what people say and what people do? I think someone said we don't judge a book by their cover. And there's no real way for you to know what his true motivation was. But when we think of empathy, would you rather someone be a person that shows you empathy, or would you be a, a person that shows you sympathy? What would, you, what would be your preference? Mr. Alyssa, what would you prefer? I can't hear you. Empathy. empathy. You'd rather have someone, and, and, and you would want empathy because why? You don't want someone to pity you. But isn't it okay if someone feels, gives you condolences and they say, well, I'm sorry for your loss? Is that okay? They say, I'm sorry for your loss. Miss Janet, is that showing empathy? No, it's more sympathy. It's more sympathy. Okay? So when we ask you, like we're doing a worksheet or we're doing something, don't just say, I've shown empathy. That's not enough to just say, I show empathy. I want to know what are the steps you're taking to put yourself into a person's shoes? Are you listening to them? Are you identifying their emotions? Are you in touch with the emotion that they're experiencing so that you can understand the why of how they're feeling that way? So the last question I have for you is, this is American literature for us. Why do we care one way or the other about empathy in our writings, in our readings? What's the, what's the point? Mr. Davis. To show more emotions for their part. To show more emotions toward our test? 
to our text. What do you mean by that? Like an example can just go the dark cell or something like that. So it would just be blank. I'm not understanding. Talk to me. Say it again. What 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 is it? I appreciate you trying and, and giving me that effort. I'm just not sure where you're going with that. What are, what are you saying? And your elbow partner's not here to help you, Miss Amber. I feel like it would be the reader more an, an understanding to what they're writing. It would give the reader more understanding of what the author is writing. What text do we read where we had that situation? What sticks out to you? Mr. Uh, Alonzo. You read my mind. Good job. Give him some love. I was wondering if we were able to be able to reach back and pull that one out. The house on Mango Street. We're able to identify because we're able to put ourselves in that situation. It makes us better readers. And it makes us better able to understand conditions that are appearing in the work. Because, Ms. Deanna, Ms. Viviana, what, is, what do I always say? Say it again so everybody can hear you. Before you educate the head, educate the heart. Before you educate the head, educate the heart so that we have an understanding of where our writers are coming from. People will use Miss Maria Mendez Jones, I love your name. What do writers use to persuade us to feel some kind of way? I can't hear you. What do writers use to persuade us? What do they do? Mr. Eric, what do, what, what do writers use? Ms. Mendez Jones. Um, Say it. I can't hear you. Literary devices. Literary devices. It all comes full circle. Everything we do comes full circle. They use literary devices to pull on our heartstrings to make us feel some kind of way. And then you, as a reader, have to understand. Are you feeling sympathy for the situation? That you have empathy for the situation? So that you can understand where they're coming from. And then you can use your critical thinking to put the events into context. Right? OK. So we had previously worked on our empathy worksheet. Some of you build them out. At the top of the worksheet, it said, expect to have more than one answer. Because people can feel several emotions about the same event, and those emotions might even conflict with one another. So when I ask you to do your worksheet, I expected to see more than one answer in response to the question. Uh, some people, elbow partners aren't here. Everybody has an elbow partner. Everybody who knows who your elbow partner is, let me know. Who's your elbow partner? Okay, and Mr. Damon, where are your people at? You're gonna work with uh, Ms. Maria Montez, says, your people aren't here on that side, okay? So I want you to work with your elbow partner to give me more than one response to my worksheet. This needs to be now. Give me more than one response. I want you to look at the situation. Do you have a, a, a bunch of situations, Mr. Davis? We have a bunch of situations on our worksheet. I want you to work with your elbow partner, and Ms. Eddie's gonna work with our, uh, 
they would learn to want to identify more than one situation, one, more than one emotion. Want to identify more than one emotion um, to a situation. And then I want you to think about in this situation, how would you show empathy? I'm to follow in the back. Okay, so the first one is you see on TV that a tornado has leveled a town in Kansas. Many people are homeless. How do you think they would feel? And how would I feel if this happened to my family? I want you to get in touch and talk to one another about more than one emotion. We should dig deep and just see, you know, how would you feel? How would you go about expressing empathy to a person who had lost their home due to a tornado? Who's your elbow partner? Okay. Um, since we have, whenever someone's missing, you guys just work together in this. And if some of you have an answer, then you can share your answer with, you can share your answer with your elbow partner so that way you automatically have more than one response. We're talking about how do you think they would feel? You see it on TV that a tornado has leveled it down. So how do you think how do you think they would feel? The homeless people, how do you think they would feel? Mm -hmm.
And what do you think about But for purposes of this worksheet, you can actually use both of those emotions to help you get in touch with that. I won't tell you though, you can be sad and not necessarily depressed. Yeah, but it depends on the type of thing. Depends on the situation. Oh, how are my how are my Spanish students doing with this? This is so good. Okay, we're ready to move. You have questions? You don't have a paper? Why not? Okay, your best friend's mother just died. How do you think she or he would feel? Heartbroken. Remember, there's no one identifying emotion. We can combine all these feelings because the purpose of identifying the emotion is to be able to climb inside of their shoes and understand what it is they're feeling so that we can understand the why of what it is they're feeling. So I want many, many emotional responses to the different situations I'm presenting to you. What are you guys doing? How we doing? How we looking? 
Lord juga. Remember, we want to move past simply feeling bad for the person, right? Empathy is a stronger connection. Is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay? Do you have a situation where that's the appropriate emotion? Is it felt? And good use of the word, on the word chart. Thank you, Mr. David. Uh, I want to point that out to you as well. When we're trying to identify these emotions, we do have a word chart. And so you can improve your vocabulary by using words, Miss Janet. Miss Janet. Using the words that are on our word chart. Okay? Um, I'm missing an essay from both of you guys from yesterday. So, yeah, but I think it was the elephant, the elephant man. So if you happen to finish this worksheet before we finish working on it, you need to uh, submit that to me. How you making out? Is there any help at all? You help me. You help me elbow partner? Yes. Okay, you don't have to do a complete sentence. Just give me the words. Just give me the words. Just compassion. I like that word. Good job. Does anybody want to share an experience they've had over the past week that um, coincides with an emotion? I think I've asked you this earlier, did, that you want to, either you needed empathy or you showed empathy. Can you show empathy towards another person when they're super happy? Of course. Okay, then I have something similar. Uh, a quick story. So a couple weeks ago, my little sister learned how to say my name, or at least uh, say a little right. Hang on a second. All eyes. Oh. Mr. Dane is trying to share. Oh. So it's, it hasn't been that long until my little sister, she's, she's one, she learned how to say my name. And then I felt a little empathy towards my mother because, uh, and then she felt empathy towards me because she knows how it feels calling my mom mom or mama and I was just I don't know how to explain it but I was really happy and so was she she knows what it felt like to be called by her own daughter and I did and I felt I was happy we were able to go there so she learned how to say my name thank you so much for sharing with us a particularly particularly because it is assumed that to show empathy has to be under the worst of circumstances. And that's not necessarily true. In fact, it's better to be able to share someone else's joy when things go well. And that's a perfect example of you knowing what that feeling was like. Thank you for sharing, that was a good example. Does anybody else want to share an emotion that you had this week where you wanted empathy and you felt empathy towards someone? Where are my athletes? 
Please, uh, you guys aren't going to share? I told you you got to step up your game. What's going on? Where's my athletes at? You can't concentrate? Because what? The final exam at who has? Right. You can't concentrate because of the final exam that we have next week? You feel worried? Okay, so did you guys hear that? Mr. Yeah. Daniel, did you hear that? No. Hang on a second. Mr. Daniel, share with the class what you just said. I mean, Mr. Dave, share, share, share with the class what you just said. can't share, you can't concentrate because you have an anxiety over an exam that we have next week. Can anybody relate? Does anybody have empathy toward Mr. Yeah. Uh, David, Mr. Crystal? Well, what would we do to show him empathy? Um, he said he feels nervous. He can't think. He has a headache. He's, he's worried about this final next week. So what, how will we go about displaying empathy? Don't we want to be sure that we do what, Miss Amber? Well, first we listen to him. Then we suggest other things like maybe helping him study and better him his mind out when he has a need. Because he might be ready for it. But before we begin to offer our suggestions for what he uh, might do, because that's kind of taking his moment away from him because we're offering what we think he should do. What should we be doing in order to put ourselves in his shoes or share with him? Because this is a unique situation because the fact of the matter is you are in his shoes, right? So you want to listen, let him get it all out and let him feel that you are listening. As a small aside, I can tell you there's no reason to feel anxiety about our final. We will review for the final. It's all material that you know. And I am particularly proud of this class because you've come a long way. You guys are all carrying high averages and you're all doing really, really well. And so ease your anxiety and take it one day at a time. Okay? Mr. Dave? Okay. All right. Are we complete with the are we complete with the worksheets? Are we complete with the worksheets? Or relatively complete, close to complete. We're running we're running out of time. I got two things I need to do. Um, as the class goes on. Where are my groups at? Where's group one? Group two. Group three. Group four. Group five. And group six. Okay, so we have six groups. Group one. I'm thinking I'm going to split group one up since you guys are working English and Spanish, and let our um, English learners uh, present. Uh, let's present one, uh, question one, and then uh, the other half of group one will do question two, and we'll see what that looks like, okay? We're gonna let, who, who's the focus person between Ms. Salima and Mr. Smith? Who's gonna, who's gonna do it? 
I think we should let Mr. Sill do it because she doesn't get to participate nearly enough. And uh, since we have the interpreter, we'll let her do it in Spanish. How's that? Okay, let's go. Welcome to the stage. second half to that question. How would you feel if this happened to your family? How would you feel if this happened to your family? So first it's what's happening to the people, then it's what's happening to your family. And so what would be the emotion? And what might she do to show empathy with this family? Well, she would try to support them, show support, and help them out. What are we missing? Clap, let's help them. What are we missing in this equation? We try to show support, we try to help them out, and we would do what? What's the first thing we gotta do? We're gonna listen and identify the emotion that they're feeling so we can understand the why. And then, you know, some whys are more apparent than others. It's pretty apparent if you lose your house what the why is for that empathy, right? All right, give them a hand. Group. Uh, one, the other half. You want to take on three or four for me? Who's your spokesperson? You want to try to do it from the chair? Come on, come on. What, what, why you guys acting so shy today? You know how we do it. Let's go. Welcome to the stage. All right, let's go. Okay, so they did one. They did uh, one. Why don't you just do two? Deciding she's wallowing or is she wallowing? If we build on that word, that's one of the words on our word chart, right? As a best friend, how would I feel about this? I would feel sad because my mother would be in a good place for me. Okay, so that would be the emotion that you're identifying, and then what would you do to show empathy? Um, I would listen to uh, what she has to say. 
in an attempt to in an attempt to put yourself in her shoe. Very good. Give her a hand. All right, that's group one. What's what's happening with group two? Who did you post first? Okay, let's go. What I feel if I won the spelling bee, I'd probably feel happy and proud because it's a lot of work and dedication you put in. So to tell her that you were in the spelling bee and why, we don't want to we don't want to take their moment. Right, we don't want to take their moment. We want to do what? Um, listen. Well, listen to what I listen to them to see what they do. Very good. All right, there you go. There you go. That's how we show empathy. That's group two. Where's group three? Who's your spokesperson? Not Mr. Joe. Really? How'd y'all talk to Mr. Joe? Is it coming up? Good job. Mr. Joe, I'm proud of you. Such name has worked very hard and lost the study. How do you think he No, no. Did we just do that? No, yeah. No, we did that. Identify the emotion, right? Okay, and then what are you going to do to show empathy to this person? Wait, wait, you gonna, you're going to do the talking? What's the first thing we're going to do? Because we're going to show empathy. We're going to do that. We're going to listen to the person. Listen, active listening. We're going to listen to the person. We're going to let them emote. We're going to put ourselves in their shoes. Right? Okay, good job. That's group uh, three. Where's group four? Who's your spokesperson? Miss Amber, coming to the stage. myself. Um, let me ask you something, because I'm curious about this. It says, how would the animal